Hi, it's about midnight here at the old house. I kind of wanted to play catch up a little bit. Um, and that, and I've put this off for a while because, I don't know, I wanted to do it right, like under the right circumstances, and I wanted to make sure I didn't overlook anything in the summary, and I was like, it's just, I'm going to keep putting it off, it, just do it. So this is it. This is the catch-up. I think I want to start off with, I'm just grateful that I have a house to live in, I'm grateful that I've had food to eat, that I'm close enough to family that I could visit any time. Grateful to the friends I have here, grateful to the new friends I've met here. I debated for a long time, understandably, like where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? Florida felt like, it felt like I was a failure. Like I couldn't make it out in the real world, so I'm crawling back home. Now that's not true, but it's how I felt, and I think other people have felt that way too, especially when they come back to where the area they grew up in. So I had someone ask recently, like, how do you feel being back in Florida? And it's a really hard question to answer. Um, I'm doing pretty well now. I'm kind of excited about where I live and the city I live in and the opportunities and the adventures that await me, but during those first few months, going back to February and March, I was really not happy to be here. I just looked at the palm trees and just like, oh. It's kind of like a, a reminder every time I woke up, like, failure, failure. But I, I think those times have passed, but it's something I'm still getting used to. The climate, the vegetation, the people, the culture. But I just want to reiterate, I am so grateful for what I have um, after all that's happened. I remember telling the landlord um, of this house uh, back in February, I was really just looking for a place that's quiet, um, that's private, a place I can heal. And that's exactly what I got. Hot dog, let me show you a little bit about this place. Let's start with just giving a little tour of what I call, what I call the sad boy house. It's a sad boy house because there is, you can hear the echo, there is like nothing here. It is almost unfurnished. And for the interim, there's no place to sit. Okay, here's the living room. Here's the dining room, I guess. And there's no place to sit down. So while I would like to be social, I don't think I'd be remotely comfortable having anybody over, because there's, what do you, you want to sit on my sleeping bag? You want to sit on Andy's sleeping bag? Would that be cool? Here's the bed situation right now. I've got a couple sleeping bags on the floor, got a pillow, got a TV going right here. Super, super luxury, super cool. Definitely a grown up bedroom. Here's the office, which actually resembles something usable, pretty much as you've seen for years. Kitchen, very unorganized still. Oven, refrigerator, washer and dryer stacked. Got a bathroom here, pretty much what you expect. Did get hot water today, so that's, that's a plus to actually take a hot shower, that'd be nice. And that is pretty much it. What's also interesting is I may only be here for 30 or 60 days. Uh, this is not a long-term rental, so it's kind of like, do I want to get a couch in here? I'm gonna have to move it in a few days. So yeah, this is a, enormous transition, enormous transition, and I'm not gonna lie and say it hasn't been hard, extremely hard, uh, very, you know, what a change, what a change. You're going from, you know, just days ago, days ago, I was married, I was taking care of the kids, and now it's, what is this, what is this? I'm in North Florida in a two-bedroom rental 
Now there's some trade-offs. Um, I knew going in, I knew this house was going to be going under renovation. Didn't know how long that would be, but it's been months of renovation. And that kind of messes with your head too. You see the house around you shifting and changing. You're looking for something to hold on to, some constant, some anchor. And even the house itself is changing colors. The walls are literally moving. So that's a bit of a psychological twist there, but it is what it is. When I arrived here, I knew there was a lot I needed to do quickly, and most of those tasks I did, just the vital stuff like getting housing and starting the process of, of working again or trying to establish my business. And I knew I also had to take care of myself psychologically, and I knew it was gonna be a tremendous change to go from married and having a bunch of kids and uh, just people around me all the time, which is great, and then it suddenly stopped. How am I gonna deal with that? Around, I think, late February to March, for 10 days I went out every night. Nothing extravagant, just little steps just to get used to being alone. Sitting in a coffee shop with nobody on the other side was important to me. Getting used to that feeling of it just being me. And that's literally what I did. I started out at a coffee shop, sat down, took a book with me, drank a cup of coffee, silently, didn't talk to anybody, just was there with myself, and then I left. The next day I did it again, went to the coffee shop, had a cup of coffee, read more of the book. Andy's going out two nights in a row. <coughs> Third day I did the same thing. Then the next up, couple days I started branching out. Uh, going to new places, seeing new sites, just exploring kind of the neighborhood around me. I tried to bring my camera as much as possible, and what I found was I started taking, I think, some of the best pictures of my life, some of the best video. Just really exciting stuff. Just each night, just increasing the challenge just a little bit more, getting myself out of my comfort zone. And some days it was hard. I didn't want to go out every night. Some days I just wanted to stay home, but I knew it was important enough. For my psychological well-being, I need to get out there and just let serendipity happen. Maybe I'll meet people. All I knew was sitting at home in front of my computer was a path to destruction. It was a success. And after that 10 days, I stopped. Um, kind of felt, started feeling guilty, like I should be doing something more productive. You know, normal feelings of guilt. I need to start working hard or something. I tried to go out with people, go out with new friends. That was great. Just try to form some new experiences, lay down some new anchors, some new constants. Feeling a little tired today, but just really uh, glad to get out of the house and socialize a bit. Well, last night was fun. Went out to a Japanese restaurant. I did go out to eat. Hung out with my brother-in-law, Alan, for a little bit. Good to socialize. Get out of the house. Two days of socializing in a row. Crazy. Then I chatted with people online, socialized through the text boxes. Oh, man. Crazy. I think the most interesting part of those months was hanging out with new friends. When you go through some, let's just call them challenging times, some hard times, to put it mildly, just to have people that are just meeting you now and almost verifying your humanity. Yes, you're someone that they want to hang out with and then hang out with again. You know, at first it's like, is this just a pity friendship, a pity hangout? Maybe it is. But then we hang out some more and, you know, no, it's, you know, you're actually a human being who is nice to hang out with. That was a good feeling to, and it sounds really pathetic to talk about, but uh, when your confidence and hope 
is at an all-time low, just hanging out with somebody new who confirms, hey, you're a pretty cool person. I mean, that can mean the world. Now, there's a lot of bad advice out there. I, I, I shouldn't call it bad, just... People want to say that the, the... People want to say supportive things like, hey, you, you going out and, and going on dates? Oh, it's it's been such and such amount of time. I, I think you're ready to to uh, have some relationships. No, no. First of all, I'll say after a separation, divorce like I had, there is, and this is very common. I found with other, at least the men I've I've communicated with, there is a strong desire to regain that companionship, and that occupied my mind for a little while just to find companionship again but at the same time I knew I'm not looking for a relationship I'm not dating and in fact pretty much all the professional advice that I've received and read they say don't even think about forming a new relationship until at least and this is on the low end at least a year after the end of your uh, long-term relationship Wait at least a year. I'm not even at that point yet. And I, I, anyway, I agree with the advice wholeheartedly. At the same time, I had that strong desire for companionship. There's, you know, it occupied my thoughts. Um, I acknowledged them, but I kept them at bay. Uh, I think I had some wisdom. But, I mean, what would I be, you know, juggling everything and a, a relationship? I'd be crazy. I say all that because yes, I do go out with people. Some of them are female, but I, it just that whole relationship thing is not on my radar. I like having friends, like hanging out, and that's about as far as I'm taking. I think that's the healthy approach um, that many many people suggest, and I agree with. Another thing I did was, you know, as a single guy living alone, I found myself buying some really junky food, uh, frozen pizza and stuff. Um, I couldn't afford a lot, but it just, I found myself following some bad uh, shopping habits. So I looked at some meal services, you know, you've heard of Blue Apron, what's the other ones, fresh, fresh cooking, I don't remember, there's Pantry Boy, that always comes to my mind, Pantry Boy, um, Pantry Boy sounds as good as it sounds, we'll just say that. It has its benefits, don't get me wrong, but I'll, I'll say that for another time. That became something really cool that I looked forward to. There's, there's, and I found a way to do it cheap or free in some cases. And I found compared to my regular expenditure for groceries, these home meal delivery services were about the same or cheaper. So I did a lot of cooking and that was a lot of fun. And just having that box of tasty food to look forward to was literally something to look forward to. It was exciting, it was fun. I got to eat food that I normally wouldn't eat or cook. Asparagus. I've eaten asparagus. I would never go to Publix. It's Florida. I would never go to Publix and pick up some asparagus. These services make it easy and make it pretty tasty. So I did those 10 days out. I went out with friends. Um, I was making healthy food. But then, as you might expect, reality started to creep back in a little bit. I started waking up thinking about reality, thinking about the kids. And I'm not going to go too deeply here, but when you think about your kids and you think about them being far away, and just wondering how they're doing and wondering what they're thinking. Thinking about their future. Wondering what it's going to what it's going to be like when you see them again. These are feelings that cut to your bone, cut to your core and can crush you. So when you wake up in the morning and you feel like you've lost everything and you have no hope of things turning around, it can get really dark. You fall into that dark pit. 
you wake up in the night and you think about these dark things and ponder them and try to come up with solutions, but you can't. And then you wake up in the morning and it repeats. The reality's still there. There's nothing to look forward to. Hope is fading. Life becomes very claustrophobic. I start staying in more and becoming psychologically what I didn't want to be. I don't think I've ever... I don't want to flippantly throw out the phrase suicidal. I don't think I really truly was in the sense that um, like a professional would diagnose or something like that. I think um, what I've heard people like crisis centers or, or a therapist will ask, have you had you know, thoughts of harming yourself? And maybe the answer would be yes. I think a lot of people, I mean, I, I, I would assume most people have at least thought about it. You know, everybody, I think, in life at some point is going to endure some massive tragedy in some regard and enter that dark pit. So yes, whenever you're in that pit and you're disoriented and you wake up and there's nothing to look forward to, there's nobody there, there's nothing to do. Yes, your mind goes to those places. The next step that somebody might ask is, have you planned what you're going to do? We're still talking about self-harm here. I remember one morning where, yeah, I was still in bed. And there's just nothing to get out of bed for. Like, wh what? I mean, I'm speechless because there's just nothing. It was just an emptiness of, there's nothing calling me out. There was nothing, there was no responsibilities to go to. I mean, there was, but I felt like there wasn't. There was like no hope. So I thought about what I would do and what notes I would leave. And that's when I stopped myself. And realized that's not the solution to my problems and the pain that it would cause and the kids that would remember and think and wonder. And I kind of have I feel like I have a lot to prove and do in this life. Call it a chip on my shoulder, I don't know. But I did get myself out of bed. I realized that the mind and the body must have something to look forward to, some hope, some reason to get out of bed, or it literally, I think, literally, and I'm using that word literally, starts to die. The mind starts to fade, the body starts to fade, and you don't want that to happen. So in April, I listed all the things that were stressing me, all the problems I had and the struggles, and I realized I need to, to make a valiant effort to just seek out work that would get me out of bed. And as a bonus, they'd pay me for it. It's like, wow, that's fantastic. They'd get me up at 9 a.m. or whatever, and they'll pay me for it? That sounds fantastic. And that became my focus for April, May, and June. Getting work back on track. And going in, it was hard. And I felt really lazy. Sometimes just one business contact, spending just like 30 minutes, is all I had in me for that day. But I kept at it, and a little each day it grew a little bit more and more until it became a job to find regular work. But a dumb thing, I, I don't know if this is dumb or not, but what I did was, during this process of focusing on basically the trick, the hack, to take those little steps forward of self-improvement to get me out of bed. I kind of isolated myself. I said no socialization, no fun, no social media until I solved this problem. 
And so I focused pretty much every day on making business connections. I think I talked to like a hundred different companies. Now I haven't solved that problem completely, but there has been positive progress since I started. And that's really the goal here is to just make positive incremental steps, be better than I was yesterday. So I knew having regular tasks to get me out of bed would help me psychologically. I also want to make myself physically better. At the beginning of all this, I was on some medications to help me chill out. And for the most part, I'm off those medications. I've started exercising more, hiking almost daily for miles. And what's funny about these hikes is they started off as just slow walks. And I don't know how many days I've been doing this now, um, but I can kind of almost start feeling that push of run which is strange. It went from just like a slow walk to a brisk walk, now let's try jogging. So I guess all in all, I'm optimistic about the future. I wake up, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely still grieving, for sure. But I have hope, I have something to look forward to. I'm feeling healthier. And I really like that idea of just being a little bit better than you were yesterday. Taking those incremental steps having that trajectory, and just being the best possible human being I can with what I have. Try not to compare myself to others, and that's been a problem, like right now, like, you know, it feels like my cohorts, my friends, relatives, have life figured out, and everything is running so smoothly for them. Look at me, blah, 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 wah, 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 cry, cry, cry. I heard somebody talk about the only person you have to compare yourself to is yourself yesterday. <laughs> if you're doing better than yesterday, you're doing good. Keep on that trajectory. Keep raising the bar. So I'm trying to think, like, what advice would I give myself a couple months ago? I don't know. I don't know exactly. I think I did. You know, I didn't fall into any weird traps or temptations or addictions or. I think I had to go through what I had to go through. I definitely don't think I'm through it yet, but I'm just trying to think like you have to go through this process, I think. You have to go through that. Um, I've almost described it as like your brain has been drop kicked into the ocean and it has to imagine your brain has little arms sticking out of it and it's swimming up to the surface. Uh, just to get that oxygen and, and you're dizzy and confused and it has to swim to shore and figure out life that's where I'm at I think I'm approaching the surface at least haven't swam to shore yet but um, that drop kicked brain into the ocean has not sunk which I'm grateful to say I think I would tell myself be patient be very humble I would say, I know you have strong feelings for companionship. You know what the right thing to do is. I'd probably say dial, dial it back a little bit quicker, maybe. It's just very distracting. That's, that's the problem, is when you, when you have those, I'm going to call it urges. Uh, maybe that's the wrong word. Just a desire to be, just to have a companion to watch a movie with. You know, just base level, you know, just... Those feelings can be, can occupy your mind. It, it did me. And it was distracting. Yeah, I would totally tell myself, start lining up work faster now. Start now. Don't wait. It's going to take months. You think it's going to be two weeks? No. It's going to take months and months for you to get this sorted out. You need to start reaching out now. That's what I would tell myself. Would I have had the energy to follow that advice? Probably not. But that's probably what I would tell myself is... And it seems like a mundane, trivial solution, but just find a task, a responsibility that will get you, wake you up at nine o'clock in the morning or eight or whatever. And that's going to solve a lot of issues right there. It's helped a lot of people. Some people just get a job to get out of bed. I've, I saw a TED talk about a lady who was trying to find the perfect job and work and career. And her mother's advice is just find something that's going to get you out of bed. And it, and it seems, like I said, so mundane. And are we so weak as a species that our, psych, our psyche can't even get out of bed if we don't have some kind of task or job? I think maybe the answer is yes. 
you've got to have hope. You have to have something to look forward to. And something to start with, I, again, going back to what advice I would give myself a couple months ago, start out with just finding some gigs, some work that's going to get you up regularly and pay, hopefully, regularly. And that's a great start. I would also tell myself to close that closet because you're going to get up one of these nights at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom and you're going to smash your fingers when you open that bedroom door and the two doors collide on your knuckles and it's going to hurt like crazy and it's going to hurt for a long time and you may have fractured or broken your fingers. I actually don't know yet. I hope they heal up. But that's the other piece of advice. Anyway, I've probably overlooked a lot of important information over the past couple of months, but I just want to summarize this as quickly as possible and keep moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Again, I'm just so grateful for what I have. Grateful for you. Keep making progress in your life. Find things to look forward to, to hope for. Appreciate the people that are in your life. Appreciate those friendships those connections you have, because they can disappear really quickly. Life moves fast, as Ferris Bueller told us a while ago. Tell your friends you appreciate them. Tell them how you feel, be authentic. Be a little bit vulnerable. It's worth it. Crummy stuff has happened, but I'm looking forward to the future. All right. I think it's after midnight. Good night.